All right, let's go. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk bearing edges as we close this out. <clears throat> Drum shells, sound, bearing edges. The sound of a drum is the heads. Again, because I can take a head and I can tension it on a frame and I can get the sound of a drum. Without heads, I can't do anything with a shell. A shell is just an empty cylinder. So you can get the sound of a drum without a shell. You cannot get the sound of a drum without a head. So the sound of a drum is basically the heads. And the shells and all the other components that are part of a drum shade, color, the sound a little bit. Uh, are these tremendously audible? Are they, do they meet up to all the super hype and the ultra hype in the drum manufacturing industry? But all the information that's out there about shell design and all the different things that go into shells these days that was never part of the discussion back when I was young. And you could look at a catalog regardless of what company and here was the drum set and here was the finish and the hardware that came with it and here are the color options or whatever uh, and here it is from set to set the size drums and whatnot shells so somewhere this came in and it has just escalated to a point of look who am I I'm nobody I'm not some big-name drummer that is making comments about drums I do not run a drum company. I don't make and sell drums. I've just been doing this. I've just been making drums for more than 25 years. And in that experience, I've made some observations, so I share them. And it's interesting that in some ways, if you, like I've said before, this is like taking a bone and throwing it in a pit of dogs, and they go crazy. Some people will see this information and say thank you. And for those that have said that, I appreciate that. Uh, uh, on the videos and then there are others who say, oh, I didn't know that thank you I appreciate that I see what you're saying then there are others that <laughs> you're crazy you don't know what you're talking about you're a liar you're oh it gets it gets nasty it's crazy why I do you know of any other subject in drumming that engenders that kind of thing maybe when people maybe when young people talk about certain drummers that they that they really like you know they feel the need to defend them. There are some people that feel the need to defend manufactured drums for some reason. But when I have been to drummers forums, do-it-yourself forums, where some of the custom boutique guys come in and share things, and you bring this subject up and they say, yeah, it's, that, yeah the, the shells don't. It's 100% of all the components that make the finished drum that makes the most difference. But the shell, you know, the shell doesn't. Make, so they know it. And when you go to the boutique websites, you don't see a lot about shells. Maybe some of the guys that make stave drums out of hardwoods talk about the characteristics and personality of various hardwoods. But for me as well, okay, hype your stuff. But when you get on the Jonka scale, I don't expect I don't expect woods that are very close in hardness to sound a great deal different. Do I expect basswood to sound like Bubinga? No, of course not. Would I spend a lot of money for this? Uh, it's stamped on the inside, made in China, thinner. Uh, shell this is hard to tune with uh, four lugs would I expect what I'm gonna pay money for this yeah I don't think so this is get it out the door as fast as you can let the kids beat on it that's what this is for all right now in calling it a toy right I'm using mallets I'll explain why in a second uh, in calling it a toy it's still it's still got two good heads on it and it's a drum shell Unfortunately, now there's something rattling on the inside of the lugs, but it's the sound of a drum. It's the sound of a drum. Am I going to pay a lot of money for that? Is that Bubinga? No. People buy Bubinga or the, you know, the harder woods that are used in some of the plywood shells now, and they talk about, they hear a deeper low end and more high end. Why is that? Because the heads are the heads at whatever tension are setting off sound waves and frequency in those sound waves. 
inside a harder shell, the density of the shell. Those sound waves will reflect more, bounce around more. They will not absorb as quickly into the shell wall as in a softer wood. And so the lows, the highs, the mid, everything that the shell, uh, a harder shell basically hears, as it were, from the drum heads, it stays excited and accentuated. So the harder wood sometimes give you this, this sense of deeper lows and higher highs. But you're only talking about the frequency range of a drum from the largest to the smallest is like 50 to 1K. 1,000 hertz. It's, it's not a great range. So there's not a tremendous amount of difference that you can actually technically hear a drum make. So yes, 100% of the component parts, the shell and the balance of the component parts make up the sound of a drum as a total instrument. But the sound of the drum is coming off the heads. Now yes, the person, the sticks, the touch also goes into the sound of a drum to some degree. And, and you know, you can see two different guys. You put a, a rock player and a jazz player on the same set of drums, that set of drums might sound different just because the touch is different between the two players. So I don't argue that. Look, if, if there's some kind of magic that someone hears from the 100% of the components that goes into a drum, if there's something magical that they hear that just draws them to one drum company more than another, uh, you know, that's subjective. I can't, you can't comment on that. I'm looking at this in as objective a way, logical way as I can. So, we're going to look at bearing edges. The reason I'm using mallets is I've got my three drums here, right? Maple, birch. Oh, let me. Maple, birch, and the, um, and the poplar with the thin mahogany veneer, all right? Here's Tubi. Tubi's not happy. <laughs> Tubi is compressed paper. I'm starting to see wrinkles in Tubi. Probably because the more I compress the heads, the more Tubi compresses, and he does not want to stay. <laughs> he doesn't want to stay in tune. But here's Tubi. I'm using a mallet because uh, I was looking at a Hi-Fi magazine many years ago, and they, and they mentioned that they test speakers at one watt. One watt. And that's how they test the speakers. Wow, that's interesting. So let's let's just let's listen to the sound. And this is just you know do it yourself, me, right? So I just is just a dowel and uh, some weather stripping. And depending on how tightly you wrap the weather stripping, uh, is the softness of the sound. And then you just cover it with some fabric and then you know affix it on there. Um, and so you have a mallet, right? So the sound of the mallet. This is one of the softer ones I have. I just want to hear, let's do the one watt test on the drums, okay? Now when you're talking about perfect tune, <laughs> you know, I tried to tune, there's 12 drums here, plus this one, 12, including that one, of these 10 inch toms, and when you're trying to get 12 10 inch toms all to the exact same pitch, and, you're, and, and to get something in perfect pitch, you have to cancel out, no oscillation, and that's what you're getting from lug to lug. You're, you don't want any. You don't want any oscillation. You want everything to be the same pitch. Well, here's the thing, man. Number one, trying to get all these different drums to the. I said, okay, I got a headache. I'm done. So I'm not going to do what I was originally going to set out to do. But you've heard all these anyway. They all sound pretty close. Did you hear differences? Yeah, you hear little differences. But when you play the full set of drums, would you hear those differences? No, you would not. There's just too much energy. There's too much stuff going on. So all the little nuances and details and subtle things are lost. Whatever draws you to the set and makes you want to play it and inspires you, eh, that's your thing, you know. I can't comment on that. But just in the idea of all this verbiage that's on the websites of the makers that are talking about how the way they make their drum shells and what it contributes to the sound of a drum. Oh, I just began to say, yeah, no, 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 no. Waited a long time, decided to do this. I'm nobody, but I'm just going to share others are going to share. And the more people share, I hope more and more this whole thing is going to level out. And it'll go back to the way I remembered as a young person when you when you just when you saw drums in catalogs and it, there wasn't all this nonsense about drum shells. And uh, but I'll, I'll get into that some more. So here's our little 1 watt test on Tubi. Do I hear some oscillation? Yes. Is it perfectly tuned? No. But the fact is <laughs> 
you get a drum perfectly tuned up, it does not take very long to play, especially depending on the force, the velocity, and the size sticks you use and whatnot. It doesn't take very long before those lugs are going to start to move. I don't mean the lugs physically moving, I just mean what the plastic is going to do at those points. If you hit a drum directly in the center, it's the same stress on all the... But you, as you play, and you're moving around and you're doing all the stuff, and that circle of stick marks gets wider and wider, you're putting closer pressure on the head at those tenser points. They're more tense here, right? And so after a while, you're going to get, you're going to get give, you're going to get different types of things happening, that that drum goes out of tune. Keep it, that's why drums are not chromatic instruments. They're not tuned to notes. If you tune it to a note, it's not going to stay at that note. So you get a drum at a relative pitch. Doom, 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 doom. Okay, you get them at a relative pitch. All right. So in trying to perfectly tune this stuff, and you know it's funny, I had, the, I had these drums perfectly in tune. I had them down on the floor. They're on the floor. Well, we have a crawl space. 30 degrees last night. Crawl space is cold. The floor is cold. Drums went out of tune, just sitting on the floor for a little while. So I thought, okay, that's not a good idea. It's a little bit warmer now, not as cold in the crawl space. And so I got the drums on the floor, but I did. I kind of retuned them again. I brought them up in pitch a little bit. So get past the point of perfect, because a drum head perfectly in tune is not necessarily the personality, character, and tone of the overall drum, is it? No. The head is giving off its own sound of what it is. Clear plastic, coated plastic, double ply, hydraulic, thicker, 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 thinner, diplomat type thing. So they give off their own sound as an organic matter, as it were. Well, it's plastic, it's inorganic, but you know what I mean. It's, it's matter. And when, you, when it's tension and you strike it, it vibrates, it's giving off a pitch, right? It's giving off a sound. The sound waves go down, hit the bottom head, come back up, all the excitement is in the shell. Does the shell, does the bubinga shell or the basswood shell accentuate and allow the sound off those heads to be excited more or less? Less bubinga more. How much more? Discernibly when you're playing the whole set of drums? See, that's, that's a matter of the discussion here, right? So, the one watt test. Tubi sounds like a drum to me. Why? Because it's two heads and a shell. You say, but it's paper. Yeah, it is. So it, it can't contribute. It's a softer sound. Sounds like a drum to me. Would I pay a lot of money for this? I wouldn't pay anything for this. This is just a little experiment. <laughs> but it sounds like a drum. It doesn't sound like a toy. It sounds like a drum. You say, well, it doesn't sound like a very good drum. Really? Let's put the maple up here and see what the difference in sound is. You hear a big, tremendous difference in sound? I don't. I hear a little bit of oscillation, so it, it just doesn't take long for that. All right, so there's the maple. Here's the birch. Oscillation. So they're not perfectly tuned. I'll admit that. But that's not necessarily affecting the character of the sound of what's going on. It just affects the tune. It affects the, the tuning, the pitch, but not necessarily the character of the sound. This is the poplar. That's lower. More oscillation there. Now, my point is this. There's six different bearing edges on these three drums. Do you hear any massive differences in the one watt test, we'll call it? All right, well, let's, let's hit them harder.
different plywoods. Aside from the fact that the poplar somehow got a little lower in pitch because I had, I had them all identical. So let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can do this quick, huh? Get a little bit closer. All right, so we'll bring it up in pitch, bring it up in pitch a little bit, a little bit closer to the other two. Now, so there are the three drums with six different bearing edges. Did you hear any major differences? I didn't hear any. Ever so slight. All right. So let's deal with the bearing edges now. Bearing edges are supposed to add all this personality and stuff to the drum. Did you hear any big changes? I don't hear any difference between the plywood shells and the overall tone of the drums. And I don't hear any major differences in the six different bearing edges that are on there. L tiny things, and I'll go over those. Let's take a look at the bearing edges and see what we've got. This common up the sidewall back cut 45, and then you just sand you sand the point a little bit. Okay, uh, common bearing edge. If you have a drum like Premier, which has undersized shells, I found out that Sonor also makes undersized shells. Then this bearing edge is okay. But on most drums, as I said, the drum head has this collar and then the flap. So you come up and then it goes flat, and you want right boom right there is where you want your apex of your shell to meet the apex of that head. So if you want to make it a point or you want to do other things to the wood, either way, you want to be off that collar. You want to be back to the flat at that apex, right? Now, this is a, an Evans level uh, 360 and they changed the basic shape of their collars flat and rather than sloping more, they just drop faster and they come out more, drop fast. This head will sit on basically any edge that's made. Uh, and it's a good idea. It's a nice thing to do. But when you're dealing with typical shells, 10 inch shell, 9 and 7 eighths. So Premier brings it back a 16th or an eighth of an inch or whatever, just to you know make up that, that difference on, that, on the apex on the head, right? At that point. So they bring it back so their edge can do it. So they can get away with an edge like this. Now, um, this drum has that edge all right this first edge up the sidewall back cut 45 just sand the edge some guys will take it you know on the sandpaper on the table on the uh, sanding table and they'll give it a few turns just to flatten it out a touch uh, I didn't hear it just left it just sanded it quick sand and uh, I was done all right now this sound it's good sound it's a maple shell good sound you can see what I did here. I still have the raw shells. I didn't do anything to those. I have my idea for the plywood, right? I've got the plywood hoops. I've got the T-nuts, the threaded rods, the acorn nuts on top. Both had tension at the same time. It's very easy. I think it sounds good. I like the sound of wood hoops, uh, you know, rather than metal. Um, that's why I'm using, you know, the wood. I just, I just like the sound better. It just seems to let the head sing more. <laughs> I got this tuned up high. Something's rattling on the kid over there. Uh, anyway, it's very lively. Why is it lively? I mean, well, because obviously you're, the energy inside there is, is you hit a top bang, and the, the sound waves and the energy is going back and forth like this. The deeper the drum gets, it takes a little longer. You know, it's like floor toms. Like I said, they, they can feel like playing the waves of the sea. I, I don't like typical floor toms because of the feel of the floor toms. So that contributes, the depth of the shell does contribute something to the sound of the drum, without question. It's a larger chamber, it can be louder, although this drum, put the two side by side, I think this one's louder. Why is it louder? Uh, I think the maple hoops, although these are plywood hoops, but also because the, the sound waves are closer together. There's a lot of excitement going on in this shell. A deeper shell, it may be bigger and has a bigger chamber, and it 
seems like it should create more volume, but not necessarily because things get a little, a little slower inside the chamber. And that's where they talk about the idea of deeper drums being punchier, right? They have a more punchy sound. But that's, that's a nice sound. It's not a bad sound, right? All right, so it's a maple shell, Keller maple. Now, so it's not a bad sound with this edge. Okay, it's not a great sound. I hear a difference between the other two because that edge affects the tuning, which affects the sound. And it affects the way the head vibrates. So this, although you can get a, a decent drum sound, it's still not going to be the fullest tone because the head is just not seating correctly on that edge. Not the way they manufacture heads, most heads now. All right, so the next over. These are obviously just done with a magic marker, right? So they're, you know, they're much thicker than the sidewalls of shells, right? Although on my plywood drums, uh, yeah, this is about right. It's about five eighths right here. I've got some snare drums that are one inch over there, but these are just done for, you know, so you can see what I did. All right. So here's the next one is the double 45. Now, if you had a 10 ply drum, you would have like five and five. All right. So your middle ply, you'd go five, five. You could go three, seven. You could go seven, three. You could go four, six. 6-4, any combination you want. I've done them all, I don't hear any great differences. It's just a matter of getting that point in the right place for the head so the head can vibrate nicely and uh, not mess with it in any way like this edge can, except with undersized shells. Now, this one, so I've never seen that before. No, you haven't. Uh, this is the exact opposite of this. This goes uh, up the sidewall, and back in on a 45, this comes up the sidewall and goes back up a 45 to the inside sidewall. It's exactly the opposite. I was in a drum shop many years ago, just before I started making my own drums, right? And uh, I was talking with the shop owner, uh, all the drums on the floor, and I was, you know, tapping all the drums and got into this discussion of just how different drums sound. And the shop owners, you know, if you go into a drum shop and you hit all the drums and you say, you know, I don't hear a big diff difference between all these drums. They'll say, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's nuances, it's subtleties, it's little things. Yeah, they'll admit it. They're there every single day. So you go in a drum shop and you hit the drums. They say, yeah, it's, it's just, it's subtle things. The companies, though, when they, when they get into the hype, that's where it changes. It gets ridiculous. All right, so this edge, the drum guy said to me, we were talking, got around talking about bearing edges. And I said, well, what happens if you, uh, if you take a, a 45 and you go back all the way up to the inside wall? He said, yeah, no, that, that would just produce all attack. That wouldn't sound good at all. I believed it until I did it myself. I don't know, all attack. Really? You'll see. Here's the next one. It's a common one. Uh, you come up the side wall and you put a round over. All right, so you take a round over bit, one eighth quarter, three sixteenths, whatever you want to use, and you round over. And then you do a back cut down, 45, 30, 60. People, I don't think it makes any big difference uh, on the back cut. But it's just a round over, and the idea is, again, is to, so the collar of the drum head fits on it. Uh, this is the baseball bat. This is the, what they call the traditional vintage edge. And it's just a baseball bat. It's a round over and a round over, and they meet at the crown of the shell. Uh, and that's the baseball bat edge. It's supposed to have a vintage sound. Well, you'll, you'll see if it sounds vintage. Uh, this one, you come up the side wall, and then you take a larger bit. You don't want something tight like that, the quarter inch or the eighth inch round or the three sixteenth. So the way I do it is a half inch bit. And you say, well, wait a minute, a uh, half inch, you've only got a quarter of an inch shell. What? No, but you're not using the whole profile of the half, half inch quarter round, round over. You're just using a part of the profile of the bit so that you can take the shell and you can you shave it so that it's not a round over, it's up a little bit, and, and, you're try and you create a shape that's right along with the collar of the head. Collar, head seat, very nice, and uh, uh, you come back, Again, come down 45 or 60 or you know 30. Guys do it different ways. I don't think it makes a great deal of difference. I really don't. Um, doesn't make really any difference at all, as you're going to see. Uh, so that's another edge there. And you'll see the idea of what 
A bearing edge is not magic. A bearing edge is not doing all kinds of things for the drum to give it, you know, total different character and personality. And you can literally change one drum to another type of drum by changing the bearing edges. No, no, no. I'll prove it to you. It's, it's real simple. So here is the back cut 45, straight up back cut. Here is the double 45. Did you hear it? Do you hear it? I hear it. There's a, it's a little bit touch, a touch softer sounding. You might call it fuller, warmer, or something. Why? Well, because there's more head touching, there's more drum shell touching the head. A bearing edge is a muting device. That's all it is. It's a muting device. It doesn't have its own sound. It doesn't have its own note. It's just the shape of the wood to make contact with the head. The more contact is made between the shell and the head, the more muting of the head. You either want this head to vibrate 100% or you can change it down to 90%, 80%, 70%, I don't know, by the amount of wood the head touches. You, you change the vibration level. That's all it is. It's a muting device. It's not some magical thing that does magical things to the drum. It's not. It's just, it's just physics, all right? Now watch. <laughs> I see a video years ago of uh, one of the guys in the, uh, the uh, manufactured drum industry, a uh, well-known guy, and uh, he tells the guy sitting across from him at this table or desk to put his hands on the table. And then he takes his hand, right? He strikes the table and he... He blows at the guy, and he tells him, tell me, which did you feel first? Did you feel the vibration of the table, or did you feel the air coming at you? And he said, well, I, I felt the vibration of the table. And he says, yes. He said, the, the thing that's the most important is that there's the energy that's produced by the head is going into the shell. And it's, it's faster than the, uh, you know, the, the air column that's moving from top head to the bottom head. Because I work with wood, I sat there and said, he didn't just say that. I mean, he did not just say that. Seriously? This is a drum head. This is made of mylar plastic. It's paper thin. It weighs nothing. It has no mass. It's not a hand hitting a desk or a table. It's a piece of plastic with no mass. You can put it on the shell. As a matter of fact, if I, if you touch the head, right? It's, I, to really feel something here, I've got to touch where my finger is to feel something. And it's my finger touching my other finger. If I put my hands way over here and touch the head, I don't feel anything over here. I gotta come way over here to feel anything. When I strike the drum in the center, how am I supposedly sending some kind of a shock wave down into the shell wall? How am I putting energy from this portion of the head down into the shell wall? There's no mass. This is not like taking two blocks of wood and stacking them on top of one another and hitting the top one with a hammer and the vibration goes from the top block to the bottom block. There's no mass to a drum head. Striking a drum head does not send energy into the drum shell. That's not how a drum works. I'll show you how a drum works. It's so easy. Take your fingers, put it on the sidewall, hit the drum. You feel almost nothing. The whole drum is vibrating, so I'm going to feel a little something. Now take one finger, put it underneath just close to that resonant head. You hear the buzz? What's that? How fast is that? It's instant. Don't talk to me about blowing air. That's, that's a ruse. That's got nothing to do with the way a drum works. When you strike a drum head, that sound wave is instant. It's down, coming back up, bouncing back and forth between the heads, bouncing around, moving inside the shell. Now watch. You say, what, what's that? 
I just killed the drum. How did I kill the drum? Because I'm pressing on that bottom head. I'm not allowing the bottom head to vibrate and contribute anything back to the top head. I killed the drum. I do not care what the shell's made of. I do not care what the material is. I do not care about the thickness. I don't even care about the density. Because the sound of a drum is the heads. And you mess with the heads, you mess with the sound of the drum. That's how simple it is. Now, do I hear a difference, like I said, between the double 45 and, the, and, this, and that single back cut 45? Just a touch of, you will notice that this drum sounds, and this is maple, and this drum I think sounds thinner. It, it doesn't have the same fullness of tone that the others have. Why? Because of that bearing edge. That one bearing edge is doing that. Watch. It's, it's so simple. It's not magic. Here's the birch drum. As far as the tone of the drum, it doesn't sound much different than the maple. What do I hear that's different? I do hear a little bit of oscillation in the tuning. It's not perfect. I hear no difference between the two bearing edges. None. I hear no difference. Why? What are the two bearing edges? This one on top here, this is the back cut. This is the 45 going back into the, into the inner wall, just like that. This is, the, this is the one. This edge has more wood touching the head than all the others. One would think, well, if it's touching that much wood, it should be pretty muted. Well, I was told that it would be all attack. Does it sound like all attack? No, it sounds pretty round in tone to me. So this edge that goes back like this, I mean, it's just, it's just out. It might even be out a little past the apex of the head. So it's out into the flat. Mylar will stretch. Mylar will meet this, head, meet this edge and wrap itself around it as you pull the head down. Mylar will mold to the shape of an edge for the most part. But you're asking it to do something on this edge that it's not manufactured or designed to do because of the, the collar is molded in. You want that collar to, to stretch out of shape as you tension this? You, that's where you create your weird sound. That's why that drum sounds a little thinner to me. It doesn't have the same fullness of tone. Well, fullness of tone, what does that mean? You're muting the heads more. So you can call it warm, you can call it meteor, you can call it round, you can call it whatever words you want to use. There's more wood touching the head. What's on the bottom? That sounds identical. That's the round over with the back cut 45. It's a round over. It's a little less wood touching the shell. The shell, the head is still molding itself to that edge, but there's, it, there's, there's not enough difference in how much wood is touching the head that the edge makes all that much difference. I don't even hear, I don't even hear subtleties here. They sound almost identical. And it's certainly not something you'll hear if you crank up a whole drum set from one, from a drum set with those edges to a drum set with the round over edge. <laughs> You're not going to hear it. Here's the poplar drum. Here we go. Do you hear any great difference? I don't really hear any difference at all. Maybe a slight little more sustain here. Okay? Maybe. Maybe. A little more sustain. What do we have here? This edge is the one with the shaved back edge to really meet the nice shape of the collar of the head. And then you back cut 45. On the bottom, our last edge doesn't really sound any different. What is it? It's the baseball bat edge, the double round over. Maybe a little more sustain to the sound. You know? Now whether you can call that a vintage sound 
compared to this edge? I don't know, but I <laughs> sounds like a drum to me. It sounds like a drum. So there you go. Six different bearing edges. Any great significant differences in sound? Only really, I think, with that first one. If I were to take that double 45 and put it on the top here, this drum would sound, have the same character of tone as the other two. That top head just does not allow the head to seat right. And so it makes the drum sound a little thinner. There, it's, it's not, you know, it's not a question of muffling the head so much as just meeting the shape of the head. Because, like I said, if, if this was an undersized shell and I used the same bearing edge, the shell, the drum would sing like a bird. It would sing like a bird because I'm away from that collar and I'm out on the flat. The head must seat correctly. However you want to tune, you know, that's up to you. Okay? That's, if you want perfect tuning, good luck when you try to keep it perfect after just playing for a few minutes. You go back around and tap all your lugs and you're going to hear that something's out. You just, you, you're going to hear that oscillation. Uh, you know, a perfectly in tune drum sounds beautiful, no question. Keeping it perfectly in tune, that's, that's another matter altogether. So, this idea of, uh, of bearing edges, drum shells, and hype. When I was a kid, when I was young, and the word hype, they started to use the word hype. The word meant excitement, or you were trying to create excitement about someone, something, some event, some product. You're trying to create excitement. Nothing wrong. They've been doing that regardless of the word hype. Advertisers have been doing that forever. So as long as advertising has been there, you try to create excitement. You hype something up. But there comes a place where hype turns into super hype, ultra hype, where you say something about your product that is not so. Can't be proven. Huh. Recently, well, I don't know how recently, that Dr. Oz guy, he had to go before Congress to answer for some of the claims he's made for diet plans. A lot of hype, a lot of big claims. Couldn't prove it? You need to back off. I've seen this for toothpaste, having to change advertising on their, on their box, their carton. They couldn't prove it. I've seen it for appliances. I've seen it for herbal remedies. I've seen it for, and I use herbal remedies. I'm into that stuff. But there's just, no, man, it's, they're not, it's not magic. It's not, it's not one thing that's good for everything. You, that, you know, it's, no. So you can't just say whatever you want. Well, you can if nobody calls you on it. But that's what I'm doing. I'm calling the companies on this. You want to put all this stuff on your websites? I went to the premier, I went to all the websites, right? If I'm going to research this, I went to all the websites to see what they say. <laughs> so you go to the premier site. Premier, if you, I don't know if you've ever seen a Premier drum set, but when I was young, if somebody showed up at, a, at one of the dan high school dance or something, one of the school dances or wherever, and they played Premier drums, the chrome just, it like gleamed. It was like it, impeccable. It was unbelievable. That, they call it a diamond chrome plating. That was, one of their, that was one of their signature things that they hyped, their diamond chrome plating. Hey, man, they could prove it. Chrome plating is a lot nicer today than it was you know, back then in some ways. <clears throat> but diamond chrome plating was, wow, it was seriously, seriously pretty stuff. Wow. So Premiere will mention, but when the Premiere site, just, it looks like the catalogs that I used to get when I was young. There's no super hype. Here's the drum set. Here's the sizes. Here's the colors. Here's the shells. Here, here it is, you know. The Gretsch site, the great, that great Gretsch sound it is a great sound. The spray painted finish on the inside, the silver, the, the secret silver finish. Okay, but aside from that, I couldn't really find any hype at the Gretsch website, let alone super hype or ultra hype. It was just the same thing. Here are the drums, here's the sizes, here's the finishes, here's what you get. Gretsch, to their credit, has put out videos of their drum sets, a couple of drummers playing. And they will say, the rep from Gretsch will say, here a little of this, subtle that, touch of this. Touch more of that. So they're honest about it. They're not making any great statements that you're going to end up with some kind of incredible, you know, uh, signature sound because you play this particular shell. They don't do that. 
But then you go to the other big name sites. Ooh, ooh my. Oh my. What you see that they write about their drum shells. They've already got, you know, you go to, the, you go to these websites. And I forget how many lines, six, eight, maybe at best, Premier Gretsch. You go to some of these sites, it's well over a dozen lines of drums. A dozen lines of drums. Look. This Pearl Tom. Like the others. Pearl Tom. That's a nice sounding drum. It's maple. Some people, well, is it hard rock sugar maple? I don't know. On the Janka scale, how far do you think any of these drums, any of these woods are as far as hardness and density? All right, so no, I don't know. What I do know is that that's a nice sounding drum. This is not some top high end drum. This is an export. It's the ECX. Okay, so it's top of the line of the export line. Ha! But the fact is, it's a good sounding drum. It's musical, nice tone. So when you go to purchase a drum set, don't feel bad if you can't buy the high end stuff because the high end stuff is not going to sound that much different than lesser quality lines when it comes to hardware, finishes. That's what you, that's what you should be paying for, not going to the websites and seeing, uh, we use, we use we, our, our researchers, we have done years of research and we have taken these plies of this wood with that wood in this configuration, running this way and that way, this thickness and that thickness and this thickness and that thickness, and then we have this special proprietary glue. Oh my goodness, the stuff they say about glue at these websites and what the glue supposedly does. Oh, yikes. And so you're looking at all this stuff and you think, well, are we talking about a drum? Are we talking about a space capsule? What are we talking about here? It's a drum. It's about, it's about the thunder of, of buffalo hooves on the open plains. It's about thunder and lightning storms. It's about the waves of the ocean when you do cymbal rolls. It's the pitter-patter of rain when you do little rolls on your cymbals. That's the imagine. With all this stuff about science and drum shells supposedly contributing some new signature sonic awareness in the universe, prove it. Prove it. Let all the manufacturers that put all this stuff out about shells. Why? Why so much about shells? <laughs> this is what will kill you. Because this is what fries me, man. You go to the websites and you see what they say about maple. My friend, there. you go to the websites. Read it. There's nothing they don't say about maple. Musical, powerful, penetrating, soft, controllable, warm. Uh, but it, it's exciting, and it's, it's, it, there's nothing they don't say about maple shells. And I'm saying, well, if maple does all that, what do you make drums with anything else for? What, what do, what's all this other stuff about? Because everything they say, but then I say, wait, 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 da, da. Why is it you say maple does this, but you say maple does that, and you say maple does this? Don't you guys know what maple does in all your years of scientific research and making shells? You can't, you don't know what maple does? Well, collectively, it does everything. Individually, they say it does this, but not that. So we have another shell that does that. But this company says, well, yeah, maple will do what your special shell does. And I'm thinking, you know what? This is nothing but marketing. That's all this is, is marketing super hype that does nothing but add confusion to the drumming community's consumer side. It just adds confusion. Take the head, seat the head correctly, tension it, you get the sound of a drum. Do I expect basswood to sound like bubinga? I do not. Am I going to pay a lot of money for this? I pay 10 bucks. No, I'm not going to pay a lot of money for a drum set with that kind of quality. Not going to happen, of course. I'm not making my own drum sets, and I wouldn't make drums like this. I suppose if I had a grandchild, I wouldn't even do, I couldn't do that. I couldn't even do that. I couldn't make a drum set like that. Even for my own grandchild, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I'd make something, I'd make something good. And it's not hard to make something good. Every single day, somebody out there is making their own drum set and it's gonna sound great when it's done because this is not rocket science. It's a drum. It's not a space capsule.
It's not rocket science. So there it is. Drum shells, sound, bearing edges. Does it all contribute to little tiny nuances and subtleties? And when you play, you know, whatever you like that you hear from one brand versus another, I, that's subjective. I can't, I can't comment that. But objectively, there's no big deal. This, this one first bearing edge makes more difference in the sound of the drum than all the others because the head can't seat correctly. That's why that drum sounds. If I put these edges on that maple drum, it would have the same nice, warm, fullness, meaty, round, whatever word you want to use, tone. Now, when people take a, a thin shell, right, they take a thin shell wall and they add uh, reinforcement rings to it. So now you've added quite a bit of space to put a bearing edge on it. So you can, you can ha have a thicker shell or you can have a thinner walled shell with wider bearing edges to put your, with wider reinforcement rings, more surface area to put your bearing edges on. You can get about the same sound in the drum. Okay, it's, it's the sound of the heads inside the shell. What's happening inside the shell? It's the sound of the heads. It's the sound waves put off in the air column inside the shell. There's air everywhere. This idea of, <laughs> that's not what a drum does. <laughs> a drum doesn't. <laughs> but you see the marketing. The marketing just convinces people when there's not, there's not even any common sense to it. So my friends, do not feel bad. Do not feel bad. If you want to buy some high-end drum set, take out your wallet and pay the big bucks, hey man, that's your choice, like I said. If, if that inspires you, more power to you. You get the better finishes, you get the better details in the hardware, the options. You, uh, you might get a love style you like better than a, a lesser line or something. You know, and go for it, do what you want. But as far as sound, oh no, you're not going to get a better sound. I'm not talking about you know 50 year anniversary drums, right? I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about collectors, drums. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm just talking about all this stuff that they say about shell design and what it's supposed to contribute to the sound of a drum. In most cases, it's a bunch of baloney. Like I said, I'm nobody. Who am I? I'm nobody. <laughs> but there are others out there like me now that are starting to recognize this. And all the guys that are in the industry that already know this, sometimes I think, do they... Do, do the drum companies actually believe all this stuff that they put in the info about their shells? Do they actually believe all this? I don't care about the sound of a shell. I don't care about you thumping. You can thump 20 shells and, and let me hear different tones. I don't care about that. Put the lugs on it. Put the heads on it. Tune them all the same. Line them all up. And now I want to hear the sound. I want to hear all these different shells and all this different design. I want And this, all this different glue and all this stuff. I want to hear how this affects the overall sound of the drum when they're done. I don't, don't, I don't, don't care about the, um, the shells. I want to hear the sound of the finished drum. Prove it. Prove it. And this goes for this goes for small boutique people. Anybody out there that's putting out this stuff about the the science of drum shells, which is so different than the way it used to be. Well, prove it. Just prove it. And I guarantee you, no matter. I've seen, I've seen videos out there with two different toms, a birch and a maple, right next to each other. Same mics, same heads, everything. Dun, dun. They sound the same. There's no difference. I've seen the drum sets. One guy asked me, he said, have you seen this video? And it's a video with three Gretsch drum sets. And he said, you know, can you, I said, I don't really hear any difference. What do you think? About the only difference I heard was that the drum set in the middle of these three Gretsch drum sets, the drum set in the middle sounded a little drier. I would imagine that was the cast hoops. There's, there's no tremendous thing going on with drum cells that made those three drum sets sound like different musical instruments from each other. They sounded like drums. So all this stuff, I, I'm embarrassed at some of the stuff that I see. I'm embarrassed. I mean, you know, somebody said, why are you embarrassed? You didn't say it. No, but I'm embarrassed that this exists in an industry that I love, even though I'm not part of it. I'm not professionally part of it. I don't make drums to sell drums. But it's embarrassing to see the stuff that Intelligent people, right? And, and it's all marketing. It's all hype, super hype, ultra hype, just to sell drums. But do not think if you can't afford a top of the line and you buy a lesser line, 
that the sound of your drums is going to be blessed. It's not. Oh, no, sir, it is not. It, you're going to get good drum sound. You might not get the hardware, the finishes, etc. Here's what you look for. Okay, you want to buy drums? And you're going to buy a brand new set of drums or used drums for that matter. What you're looking at with used drums is a little different. But if, if you're going to buy a set of brand new drums, look at your cosmetics. The lug style, the finish on the drums. Look at the hardware, the features of the hardware, what the hardware does. Is it roadworthy? Are you just going to set it up in your, uh, uh, you know, in your basement or something, uh, in a room, a family room or something like that, in a place in your house, and you're going to play them there? Uh, look at the customer service and the company warranty for their instruments, because you never know what you're going to get when it goes from their factory or in their warehouse when it gets to you finally. So you want to know what their warranty is, etc. Right? That, but as far as drum shells and the sound you're going to get, no. Prove it. I don't, I don't know what else to say, but prove it. And everybody in the drumming community should say prove it. And all those that tell me, yeah, the sound of maple has, has like highs and lows, and, uh, or it has mids and highs, or it has mids and lows, but birch has this and this and that. Oh, come on. I've heard these videos, and I'm saying, okay, you know, what? I, am I being deceived somehow? Are they messing with the microphones so that these different drum shells and, and this, the sound that these drums make is somehow, you know, is deceiving me? They've done something to it? They sound the same to me. I don't hear any great differences. I don't hear any significant differences. In some cases, I don't hear any differences. Like here, the bearing edges. No big difference. It's a muting device for the head. That's what it is. So my friends, that's it. I, I appreciate so much you taking the time. Uh, I know this is longer than the others. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. I hope it's been informative. Uh, I hope it's been helpful and a blessing to you if you have to, uh, you're going out to buy drums. Um, and I hope the discussion continues. And I hope, like the guys at Ford and others that are going to put this kind of info out there, that it just starts to level the playing field and it stops all this nonsense. And we get back to enjoying drums as the instruments they are without all this super hype about, uh, about drum shells. It's just, it's just, it's unwarranted. And a lot of it's untrue. Unfounded, untrue, can't prove it. I'll tell you what, if all the companies start putting out videos and I hear that the way they make their shells makes the drums sound different, I'll erase all these videos I've done in a heartbeat. Who needs, I don't need the friction. I don't need people calling me the things they call me because I bring this up. <laughs> and yet there's so many out, there's so many people out there that agree, you know? There's some people that just, they don't believe all the hype. And they don't buy drums because of hype. But there are people that do. A lot of people that do. Because it's a marketing device. It's false information. It's just not true. I really, I really hope it stops. I really hope I can see it. Am I going to change it? No, of course not. I'm nobody. Who am I going to? But collectively, get people discussing this and dealing this and putting the company's backs against the wall and saying, you know what? Stop saying this. I'm trying to buy a drum set here. Don't confuse me with all your jargon. If your jargon is not true, if it is true, prove it. Put out a video and let me hear the sound differences of all these drums that you say will be because the drum shells are different. Put their feet to the fire. Let them prove this. If they can't prove it, then stop it. I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't see anything wrong with truth in advertising. I don't see anything wrong with truth at all in any way, shape, or form. Truth is a good thing. So I appreciate your watching and taking the time and stuff. And, uh, yeah, we'll see where it goes from here. Thank you for your time.